Hey there, welcome back. Hey, today we're diving to unpack different interpolation methods. Ever wondered how we predict values for places where we don't actually have any data? That's where interpolation comes in, and I'll break down each method so you'll know exactly when to use which one. If you're new to interpolation, I would suggest checking out our basics video on what and why interpolation. You'll find the link in the description and the I button above. Let's look into the main event of this video. Types of interpolation methods in GIS, their advantages, disadvantages, and uses. Each method has unique strengths, depending on your data type and what kind of results you need. First Inverse Distance Weighted, IDW. Let's look at Inverse Distance Weighted, or IDW. With IDW, we assume that points closer to each other are more similar than those farther away. Think of it as a weighted average, where nearby points carry more influence than distant ones. Advantages of IDW. IDW is excellent for capturing details in areas with sharp changes like cliffs. Plus, you can adjust the number of points used, which lets you control the results based on your data's density. Disadvantages. IDW struggles with very steep or mountainous areas where values might be extreme. Also, it can't estimate values beyond the highest or lowest points in your data. Second, natural neighbor, inverse distance, weighted interpolation. It's similar to IDW, but takes a more geometric approach by finding the closest neighboring points around the unknown location and weighting them based on the area they cover. Advantages of natural neighbor interpolation. Natural neighbor is efficient for large datasets and handles clustered data points well. Unlike IDW, it doesn't need you to set parameters like radius or point count. Disadvantages, natural neighbor interpolation. It might not capture sharp changes in your data as well. So if your data has large jumps, this method may smooth them out too much. Third, spline. The spline method is all about creating smooth surfaces. Think of it like bending a flexible sheet to pass through your known data points, producing a continuous and smooth surface. A surface created with spline interpolation passes through each sample point and may exceed the value range of the sample point set. Spline can estimate above or below your sample data range, which is great for creating a flexible surface. Disadvantages of spline. Sharp features like cliffs may not come through well because spline tends to smooth over extreme changes. Close sample points with big differences can also be a problem, as spline relies on smooth curves. Fourth, Krieging. Krieging is a more advanced method that considers not only the distance between points, but also how values vary. It's more complex but very useful when you need highly accurate predictions. Advantages of Krieging. Krieging accounts for directional influences in your data, like wind or water flow. It's also highly customizable, allowing you to model spatial relationships based on your data's unique traits. Disadvantages of Krieging. On the downside, Krieging is computationally intense and needs more setup than simpler methods like IDW or Spline. Fifth, lastly, we have trend interpolation, which uses least squares regression to fit a smooth surface over your data. It's great for spotting large scale patterns, though it doesn't pass through the actual data points. Advantages of trend interpolation. Trend interpolation is perfect for identifying broad trends, like temperature gradients or general terrain slopes. Disadvantages. Trend interpolation. If you need precise values, trend interpolation is not ideal, especially for detailed variations, since it doesn't match the sample points exactly. Use of interpolation in GIS. So, how do we use these methods in GIS? Interpolation is widely used for tasks like building elevation models, creating weather maps, or estimating pollution levels. Which method you pick depends on your data. For smooth, general patterns, spline or trend may work best, but for highly variable data, IDW or Krigging might be a better choice. For example, spline is perfect for data with gentle changes, like pollution or water tables. These are five most used interpolation methods we discussed here. There are more methods such as point interp, topo to raster, etc. And that wraps up our introduction to interpolation methods in GIS. I hope this gave you a clear overview of each method. If you found it helpful, hit that like button. We have more in-depth tutorials on coming soon, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon.
Got questions? Leave them in the comments and feel free to share this with anyone learning GIS. Thanks for watching and see you next time.